And, and part of that is, it's a, in, in a sense, it's like a, what we fear is a death process. And letting go, it's in giving up, so it's, it's like, I don't know, I'm like death. I mean, I, this, again, so you won't find a story where in this, this uh, peace and reconciliation center, we were fired up, you know, and uh, we're doing God's work, you know, we were bringing pros and cats together, and he's going to, you know what we need to do now? We need to get the paramilitary characters in the room. That's what we should be doing. Right? So we get fired up, and we, we, and this was a huge issue, a huge issue in the world altogether. Do you talk to the men of violence? You know? Should we talk to the Taliban? Should we negotiate or not? You know? And um, and there were some who felt in, in this community, no, if you talk to them, that's acknowledging them. That's as long as they espouse violence, you can't go there. And they were saying, no, it doesn't matter. You, they're, you may not like what they do, but they're legitimate point of view, and they've got. If you're going to bring them in from the cold, you've got to begin relating to them. So we had to go through that whole thing. Oh, should we? Should we? Should we? We agreed we would. We organized the dinner, and we, we had three of the major figures in the Protestant, what's called the Ulster Defense Association, the UDA, and three in the Irish Republican Army, and there were three of us from the Ramsay Center. <laughs> 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 we were like on fire. This was it, this was the work. You know? So we got, we sat, all sat down at the dinner, and the minute we sat down, the three of us were frozen. Our own fear of death has us by the throat. Because we knew at least two of these men had killed. And, and you, again, you don't know this. You're like, and then there you are, man. We were speaking with our life. And it was a profound lesson because afterwards we had to figure out what had happened. What was it we thought we were doing? And this is a hard thing to face up to. It's a hard thing for many people in the conflict resolution world that I operate in to face up to, is that we were actually manipulating and using these men so that we'd feel really good about ourselves as peacemakers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's, it's a hard lesson, but a very important lesson. Because if we hadn't dealt with our own fear of death, what do we expect we're doing? Because you know? these men they have a certain respect for one another, in the same business. <laughs> same business. They love common. Well, we did. And so, so you know, it's, it's, it shakes you up. And hopefully you learn from that. And it's, it's, it's strengthening. But it's, uh, but it's very important to be, to, be, to be clear of, you know, what's guiding your purpose. You know, what's really motivating you in this world. And, and a lot of peacemaking, it's about the peacemakers, because it feels like noble work. Right? But whether, whether it's actually engaging, you know, to, to promote, to, to help communities through this process of loss and change, that's a whole other question. I realized that I didn't think it was going to be talked for an hour, but I did. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, did you, any, have we time for a question before people leave? Or? Oh, Paul's a truck. I'm captivated. Yeah. So I you know invite some questions. And if you're if you're still feeling energetic. Well I'm not sure for but I don't want to keep you that way because we think they can't be able to Yeah. Yeah. So question, yeah. So you talk about force change and, and people, you know, that kind of being the fear of loss with that. So do you do you still institute change and just help people through the process of change? Or is there something in the middle there that you're not forcing it? You know what I mean? Like, I'm kind of hearing two things, but um, is it, do we need to start the dialogue and, and create the uncomfortableness? Or yes, we do. Are we, so, you, so we want to force the change or start the change, but you're start, just saying that the result is people are not Yeah, I'll, I'll give you this. There are different, uh, different models and approaches. There's one theorist, you know, at George Hopkins University says the only the only time these very apparently intractable conflicts resolve is when when, uh, uh, when people have suffered enough. The only time that, that these these very apparently stuck, you know, intractable conflicts 
have a possibility of resolving is when people have suffered enough. Mm -hmm. it's terrible belief to you, you know, but there's a lot of data would suggest maybe, it's, maybe that's the case. How much more suffering must there be in the Middle East before enough's enough? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You could argue in Northern Ireland that after 30 years, people had enough, they were sick of it. Mm -hmm. And at that point, there's an opening. Mm -hmm. So then you have different theories about this. Um, there's one theory that says that power change, the possibility of change, lies with the power group, those in authority, the politicians. And, and this is one of the, seems to be one of the problems, that a lot of the peacemaking that, that goes on, you know, the American, the American government tries to get involved with, is at this level. <laughs> and, the other argument against that is that it's the very people in those roles of authority who are the least open to change. Exactly. Because they've all these constituents looking over their shoulder. Yes. You know, and they dare move. So then the other thing is, well, the real possibility of change, the real power lies in the grassroots. And the people. Mobilize the people. And get the activists out there. Now you have a problem here because here at the top the authority level, they have power and resource, but not the motivation. Here you have motivation, no resource. So then there's, an, uh, uh, I just finish? there's another theory that suggests, there's another possibility, this is what's referred to as track two diplomacy, where, I'll, just, I'll use Northern Ireland example, I, I, was, I, was, I directed a program in Northern Ireland called the Northern Ireland Intergroup Relations Project, that brought together uh, 18, people, um, a group from the Protestant community, a group from the Catholic Irish community, and there were four, a team of four facilitators. And the idea is that you figure out who are people in each of these communities, and the criteria is influential. By influential, it means that they're not elected politicians, but they have the ear of politicians. They can influence the decision-making process at this level. And they're also very respected by their communities. So they have tremendous leverage in the system. So you, you select these people that can be business leaders, you know, religious leaders, uh, educators. You select them really carefully. And in this instance, you see we had you know, a group from each. And the only way we, we, we began, and this is sometimes all you have is a question. We figured, we, with the four of us who were facilitators, we were two from representing this community and two from this one. And we thought long and hard, what is it, what, how could we get uh, these, you know, all those 18 people to, to agree to meet for a whole year, for six weekends throughout a year? Huge commitment. What would that be? And we, we, we went round and round and thought about it. And what we came up with was a very simple question. And the question was, we went to each one of them and we said, given that we're all in this, stuck in this mess together, are you willing to meet with 18 people to see if we can figure a way out? That was it. But we framed it carefully, you know. And every one of them thought, sort of thought about it. Yeah. Don't know why, but it was enough of a hook that they said yes. And then the next is, well, what sort of a container do you build for that? So we had to, we, in, in Northern Ireland, there's no neutral territory. So we meet in a conference center that was in the Protestant neighborhood one weekend, and then the next one we had to go to the Catholic. <laughs> and then you get, that's the first step, you get people in the room. Then what? Well, in this framework of leadership that we've been working with here for the last couple of days, the next question is, uh, What's the problem? So you go around and everyone gets, everyone gets to say, this is how I see it. And I say, no, that's not what it is. Here's what it is. And you, you know, all of that gets in the soup. And then once people hear about that, then the, the second stage is, well, what are the fears and concerns and interests of your group that need to be addressed? And everyone says that, and we were, we were frightened, if we, if we give up on that, then this will happen, or here's what we 